What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchupEssentials.com. In today's video, we're gonna talk about some of the top extensions for architecture in SketchUp in 2024. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. And so note that you can get links to all of these extensions in my ultimate extensions guide, which I will link to in the notes down below, or you can check out by going to the SketchupEssentials.com slash extensions. All right, so first up on our list, we've got Flex Tools. Flex Tools is a collection of dynamic components that are set up to be easily and quickly adjusted. It's got doors and windows and a lot more. And so you can adjust these using the scale functions. So you can adjust things without um, distorting the makeup of the doors and windows. And you can also type in more precise things in the dynamic components windows. One of the powerful things about Flex Tools is you can use it to quickly cut openings in objects in SketchUp. While we're on the topic, of Flex Tools extensions, Component Finder is a free extension you can download that helps you manage your component libraries for SketchUp. So you can use it to organize your different folders as well as bringing things into SketchUp from those folders. One of the cool things about this is you can use this to create little toolbars of just objects that you want um, that you can then use to bring those objects into SketchUp. So super powerful component management extension for SketchUp. All right, so the next set of extensions we're gonna talk about are all part of a suite from Valley Architects. Instant Architecture is a collection of different tools that you can purchase. Um, you can get yearly access of this tool through the Valley Architects website, or you can get them individually. All right, so first off, we've got Instant Fence and Railing. This is a tool that has a ton of different presets and railings that you can create inside of SketchUp. So you can use it to create glass rails, you can use it to create fences, and you can also customize the way those are set up inside of SketchUp. I will say most of the Valley Architecture um, the interface is a little bit older, but the tool is still extremely powerful and it allows you to do a ton of different stuff. So if you're looking for a railing tool with a bunch of options, you might want to check this one out. All right, so next up we've got Instant Wall, which is actually more of a site and retaining wall type extension, but it's basically designed to help you create different kinds of walls on your sites. So it can do stone walls, brick walls, all sorts of different things. Um, really powerful for creating those different site walls in SketchUp. All right, so next up we've got Instant Road, which is a tool for creating roads on surfaces in SketchUp. So this one's a little more complex to learn, but once you get it figured out, it's extremely powerful. It's got different road styles that you can add, and you can use this to actually generate roads with like curbs and sidewalks and other things like that on terrain. It's got different ways of doing that built into the tool. Um, definitely pretty complex, but when you get it working right, it can be extremely powerful. Instant Stair is a tool designed for creating stairs in SketchUp. It has a ton of different kinds of stairs you can create from very simple stairs to stairs that kind of like turn back and go up multiple different levels. It's probably got the most options for stairs that I've seen of any add-on in SketchUp. It's also got multiple different ways of creating those stairs using lines or using faces. One thing I would recommend is if you get Instant Stair, you probably need to get Instant uh, Fence and Railing as well because it sets these up with the edges so that you can actually create those railings with your stairs. But if you're looking for a stair tool that has lots of options, Instant Stair could be a good fit. All right, and then finally, we've got Instant Roof. So again, um, sticking with the theme, this has probably the most presets for different kinds of roofs of a roof extension that I've seen for SketchUp. So Instant Roof is gonna give you the ability to use faces and edges in order to create roofs. And then you can also add things like Dutch gables, dormers, adjust materials, adjust details, other things like that. So tons of different kinds of roofs within this particular extension. All right, so this next extension, I am not exaggerating when I say that it 100% changes the game when it comes to materials in SketchUp. Architectures is a fantastic extension for bringing in more custom textures to your models. It has a complete library of textures that you can bring in and import, and you can also edit and adjust them using the built-in texture editor. You can adjust tints of materials, you can adjust the orientation of the different materials, it even has options in there for PBR maps, um, as well as hatches if you get the paid version. You can also right-click on materials and edit them using our architectures. Um, I do recommend that pretty much everyone downloads this one and tries it out because it is massively powerful when it comes to your materials in SketchUp. 
So Lattice Maker is a free extension from TIG. I use this for most of my commercial storefront style windows. It does one thing and it does it really well. It takes faces and it offsets them by a distance and then it adds a glass pane to the inside. This is super fast for creating those commercial style glass assemblies within SketchUp. Um, I use this one all the time. Next up, we've got an older extension, and I keep wondering how long it's going to work because the last year that it was listed as being able to be compatible with SketchUp is version 2016, but it just keeps on going. 1001 Bit Tools has a number of interesting architecturally related um, tools for SketchUp. So it's got things for everything from the ability to like split lines and chamfer edges to more powerful tools like the tool for creating grooves on faces, um, which is really great for creating those different grooves. It's got a louver creation tool. It's got door creation tools. It's got roof framing creation tools. It's definitely worth a try. The interface is a little bit dated, but there's just a ton of interesting things you can do with 1001 bit tools and it is available for free. Just know Note that at some point, I assume it's going to break, but so far it hasn't. So definitely worth trying out. So anytime you need to take objects and drop them on an irregular surface, um, doing it manually can take a lot of time. Drop GC is a free extension you can download that's basically going to take objects and drop them until they intersect with a surface. So really great for pl placing things like trees on terrain and other non-uniform things. Note that the object axis is what gets intersected with what's below. So by setting that axis location, you can set where this is going to intersect with that terrain. Profile Builder is a smart profile creation tool. I find myself using this one more and more, but it's got two really powerful options and then some other tools. The first is creating a simple profile along a path. So you can use this to add things like base or molding or anything that goes along a path. One powerful thing about this is you can use it to swap out different profiles so that you don't have to like rerun follow me or anything like that. It also has an assembly creation tool set. So an assembly is basically a combination of profiles and then components that you can use to create things like walls that automatically add framing, smart rails that automatically add different posts, and a ton of other things. I'm currently looking for additional ways to incorporate this in my workflow just because there's so many different options that it can really make things a lot faster depending on what you're trying to do. All right, so this is the second roof extension that I'm talking about, but TIG Roof is a free roof creation tool. It's not as feature packed as the Valley Architects tool, but it is available for free. And if you just need to create simple roofs like hip roofs or other things like that, it's definitely worth giving a try. It can work with more complex shapes and you can adjust things like roof slopes and other things like that. So if you are looking for a simpler roof creation tool, TIG Roof is definitely worth trying. JHS Power Bar is unique in that it's a collection of different extensions from other author authors. So it's got a number of different extensions in here, everything from Inneroth's Upright Extruder to a bunch of other interesting tools as well. It's got tools in here. The actual Drop GC extension or a Drop at Intersection tool is included in here, but it's also got things for doing like random rotation and scale. And one of the things that I use it a lot for is placing objects on control points. You can use it to set control control points and then place objects on control points. So it's really good for like string lights or if you need to place things on grids or things like that, it's really good for that. So a ton of interesting tools in JHS Power Bar. This is another one of those that I'm wondering how long it's going to stay active because it's it doesn't get updated every time a new version of SketchUp comes out. But as far as I can tell, it seems to be working as of right now. All right, so now a couple of Fredo 6s extensions. These are some of the best extensions for working on surfaces. Um, generally, I recommend getting Fredo 6's bundle because it comes with a number of powerful extensions. One of them I want to talk about is Tools on Surface, which allows you to basically draw lines on curved surfaces. So something the native SketchUp tools can't do. It's got a really interesting offset on face or on curved face 
function. You can also draw shapes and other things on those surfaces. One of the reasons I recommend getting the whole bundle is because you can get access to tools like joint push pull. Joint push pull basically gives you the ability to push pull those curved surfaces. So you can push pull things that are curved in order to add either extrusions or also recesses in objects. It's got really interesting tools also for extruding in a vector direction or a singular direction. So if you're going to get one, I recommend getting them all, but you can get them individually as well. Next up, we've got Placemaker. Placemaker is a tool specifically designed to import and create things like cities in SketchUp. It brings in geographical data and then you can use it in order to create the roads in an area. You can use it to create buildings. So if you want to create geographical context or other things like that, you can do it with this tool. It has high resolution imports that you can purchase through NearMap, as well as some really interesting other things. One of the features they just rolled out is the ability to import some of the Google Earth or Google building mesh data into your models as well. Now you are limited by the quality of the data in there, but if you're looking for quick context, that Google data is really cool. For any kind of location creation and modeling, this can be a very powerful time-saving tool. All right, next up, we've got some tools for more uh, construction-related modeling. The Medik suite has a number of really great tools for creating different things. So first off, we've got Medik Foundation, which is basically designed to help you draw and also partially design your concrete foundations. It has a ton of different options for things that you can adjust, like your embeds, um, other things that are a little bit more specific to the actual construction. Medik Wall is a really powerful tool for creating walls that have framing inside of them. So you can actually set the framing depths or the framing uh, spacing, as well as adding openings. And when you add the openings, those are actually going to add the framing for those openings. And then you can move the framing around or the openings around in the walls. Um, in addition, Medik Truss is designed to create trusses and roofing in your models. So you can pick different kinds of trusses, adjust options, and bring those trusses in to your models in a very realistic way. So depending on what you're looking for, you could get one or all of these, but they're a lot, they're very powerful for more specific to construction style modeling. So if you're bringing in any kind of CAD data or doing any kind of modeling of terrains, you might want to check out Topo Shaper from Fredo 6. Topo Shaper basically is an improved mesh creation tool. So when you use sandbox tools in SketchUp, which is still a powerful tool, what it does is it triangulates all of your data based on the points on the edges. Well, what Topo Shaper does is it brings in a quad grid instead. That quad grid is a lot easier to edit and adjust, especially if you start using the Smooth tool or something like that. So if you're looking for another way to create cleaner meshes, you can check out Topo Shaper. In addition, there's also a tool from TomTom called Edge Tools that allows you to clean up and simplify some of those contours and edges. So if you do want to do some of that, um, if you bring in a CAD file that has like way too much data or a bunch of gaps in it or something like that, you can use Edge Tools in order to try to clean that up. So the animation tools in SketchUp are a little bit limited. They're great for creating fly-through animations, but if you need something that actually moves around, the native functions don't have that included. Animator from Fredo 6 is a tool that allows you to set up those moving animations inside of SketchUp. I've got a whole series on this, which I'll link to in the notes down below, but you can do some crazy things like I created a moving robot arm, but you can also use it to create things like moving cars or doors that open and close, animations with moving geometry. So Animator is the most full featured extension I have seen for creating moving animations in SketchUp. So there's currently no bevel tool inside of SketchUp. There's actually three options. You can pick from them depending on your situation um, for creating bevels. So first off, if you have the Fredo Suite, round corner comes with Fredo Suite, um, and you can use that in order to round and bevel off different edges. So there's also a tool from Fredo 6, which is sold separately called Fredo Corner, which is, which is his new and improved bevel tool so it's improved over a round corner and then we've also got a tool from Mindsight Studios called bevel um, that's going to give you the ability to bevel your edges but also comes with an interesting live bevel 
function, meaning that you can set it to bevel everything in an object and you can toggle that on and off, right? So if you need to go in and adjust the geometry in the model, um, that live bevel is gonna give you access to that original geometry. So you can revert to the non beveled option. Each one of these is going to be a little bit different, but they're all going to offer that bevel functionality. And then it just depends on what you're looking for. So for copying objects along paths, you can still download the path copy extension from the Smustard team in the SketchUp extension warehouse. This allows you to copy objects along paths. You pick a path, you pick an object, you set a spacing. So the object orientation within the object sets the direction that your objects face. And then if you work with components, then you can set the rotation of those objects after they've been placed just by editing the original component. Plus, you can download it for free in the SketchUp extension warehouse. So if you do more complex landscapes, you might try Scatter. Scatter is a very powerful scattering extension for SketchUp. So it comes with a number of different tools for scattering objects. You can use it to create crowds. You can use it to create vegetation. Usually I end up using it for vegetation. One of the powerful things about Scatter is it has the ability to work with proxies, meaning that you can scatter lightweight proxies in your model and then send your model to a rendering software where those will load in the heavier geometry so it really saves your performance. In Scatter version 2, they rolled out a number of really powerful things having to do with like zones and groups and other things like that. From a scattering feature set, I don't think anything else in SketchUp comes anywhere close to what Scatter offers for scattering things in your models. So sometimes when you're working in a SketchUp model, the way that it maps textures doesn't work very well. Through paint is an absolute must have for fixing the way textures are mapped on complex surfaces. It allows you to select different UV modes and apply materials to those surfaces. And then you can live adjust both the size and the orientation and location of those materials on surfaces. So extremely powerful. I use this on most projects to place materials. If you do anything with any kind of cloth in your model, um, Clothworks is a cloth simulation tool for SketchUp. Um, basically what Clothworks does is it simulates the way that cloth acts. One of the cool things about this is these simulations are live, meaning you can click and move parts of the cloth around in order to affect the simulation. There's things like pins in the paid version, which you can use in order to pin different parts of your cloth. So super powerful for simulating things like drapes and other things like that. And so when you're looking at different material options, going through and finding those materials and replacing them can take a long time. Material Replacer is a free extension from TomTom that allows you to replace all instances of a material in your model with a new material. So you can use this in order to quickly swap out materials to look at different options um, inside of your models. Now, just be aware that this does replace every instance of the material in your model, so you wanna be a little bit careful with that, but this is a huge time saver if you're just trying to swap out one material for another. All right, so let me know if your favorite extensions made this list or if there's something I need to add. I just love having that conversation with you guys. I'll link to my full guide to SketchUp extensions on this page. That's going to give you information on over 140 different SketchUp extensions. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.